Hey guys, how's it going? All right, so today um, I've got something a little bit different, um, but also kind of the same. Um, if you guys have seen my videos on the Mega Drive 1 and the Mega Drive 2, adding this video and doing all the region switching and that, you would have heard me say that um, all of the modifications I do on the Mega Drive versions line up with the Sega Genesis. Um, however, there was a kind of an exception, and that is this little machine here. So this is a Sega Genesis 2, um, and I have to say a quick thanks to Sean3614 for helping me out with this, because um, Sega Genesis, they, they didn't come out in New Zealand. They were basically exclusive to the American market from my understanding. And um, to be honest, I've never actually seen um, this particular one in person. I've seen a Sega Genesis before, but not this one. Um, what makes this special is this is what's called um, a VA, well the motherboard in this is what's called a VA4. And the more common name for them that people tend to use is the three quarter model. Now, you can tell you've got um, one of these um, by looking on the back of it. And I don't know if it's going to show, oh yeah, you can see. You see the heat, um, you see the shielding in here, how it doesn't go all the way across. See most, um, well in fact all Mega Drive 2's go right the way across and um, most Sega Genesis 2's always uh, also go right across as well, but not this one. So what I'll do is I'll just pop the lid and I'll show you. Don't mind my cables hanging out the back here. You can see that, um, well you can see where it gets its three quarter name from, it doesn't fill up the whole housing. It's three quarters the size of a regular Genesis 2 motherboard. I imagine these come about like most of Sega's wonderful ideas um, about saving costs. Um, so this board is redesigned. Now the thing that makes this different um, is if you go to do the region switching and the 1560Hz switching on this, the solder points that I show in the Mega Drive 2 video simply don't exist um, on this board. They're in a completely different place. Um, however, what does still line up is your composite, your stereo and your S-video outputs. They, all, they still line up, but the caveat with that is you have to have a Sony or a Fujitsu encoder. If you've got one of the Samsung encoders in there, then you're going to be out of luck, unfortunately. But I was actually quite surprised when I opened this up because everything I've read about these on the internet is, to be honest, quite negative. They say, oh, if you've got a VA4, it's like one of the worst ones you can get. But I'll just pop the shielding off here, provided they don't get it all caught up in the cabling. And you can see I've already tapped on some wiring here for some testing, but um, basically the video encoder in this one, not that you can probably see, is actually a Sony. So the output of the machine's fine. I, in fact, I, I must admit it works really well, but as I was saying, the solder points are different, and I've had a few guys write in and say, hey, you know, I really want to do this. Um, English and Japanese switching and 1560Hz switching but I can't because I can't find the points and having never seen one of these I was like mm, I, I don't know <laughs> look around but thank, thanks again to Sean um, I'm finally able to show you what to do if you happen to have one of these machines. So what I'll do is I'll get you zoomed in and I'll show you where the new points are and we'll um, yeah get into it. Alright so Looking at our motherboard here, we've got our um, Sega 315 chip in the middle. And just in here, you can see that there's four little points and one of them's got a little resistor across it. Okay, so that's one set of points that we're going to need. And the other set of points we need are just over here. And it's the same thing again. See, there's two contacts there and then a resistor bridging two of them. So basically this is going to work exactly the same as every other Mega Drive in Genesis, it's just that they're in slightly different points. And this little resistor is basically what's called a zero ohm resistor, so it has no resistance at all. All it is is just a link. So the first thing we need to do is actually remove this link and that way it's going to expose all four points and we just attach some wiring in its place and we can do our switching from there. And we repeat the same up over here. So. This one down here, which has got R34 written next to it, is a bit of a reference. This controls your 50 and 60 hertz switching. And this one up here, with R32, that's going to control your English and Japanese switching. So um, we'll get this resistor removed and we'll get some wiring tapped on. Alright, so as I was saying, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these zero ohm resistors. So 
What I'm going to do with that is I'm basically going to add a little bit of solder to either side. And um, these unfortunately aren't too easy to work with because they're surface mounted resistors so they're a little bit fiddly. But on a positive side, because you're um, removing it, it doesn't really matter if you damage it. Um, but what you don't want to do is um, damage the track underneath because we still need to use that. It's two gone. So nice and easy. There we go. You can see how tiny they are. Okay. So what that does leave us with now, if we can come a little bit closer, is our four points. And basically what happens here is you can actually um, see with you can see with your eyes what happens, but you'll see one track leads off. So the Sega 315 chip and the rest goes off, one goes off to power, um, 5 volts and the other one goes off to ground. So we'll just get some wiring attached and uh, then we're just about done with it. Okay, so when you're looking at um, a 1560 hertz one, which we'll do first, you can do, basically see that these two contacts here at the top are joined together and it follows on up this path and into the Sega 315 chip. So that's where we're going to add our, in this case we're going to use a white wire and that's going to go to the center of our switch. All right, and then down the bottom we've got our 5 volts on ground. So mount your switches up first before you do any of this. It's always a lot easier. And then um, basically we'll tap on the wires and home and hose. Just looking at our uh, English and Japanese switching here, it's the same thing. The top two points are actually joined up and you can see that they go straight up and into the Sega chip and the chip's expecting to get 5 volts or ground to let it know whether it's English or Japanese so we're going to add our red and black wires down the bottom and we're going to add a blue wire up the top and that's going to go into the centre of our switch so we'll get our switches prepared and then we'll get the wires attached ok so I've got my switches already prepared here um, imagine these are already mounted to the, the chassis and very simple basically you put ground on one side, 5 volts on the other and the wire that connects up to your um, your Sega chip is going to go in the centre. And these are just single pole double throw switches like we usually use. So SP, DT if you're searching for them on the net. And as I said, um, I'm going to use the blue wire, that's going to be for our language switch. And the white wire is going to be a 50 or 60 hertz switching. Okay, time to get them attached to the board. Okay, so we'll do our um, 50 and 60 hertz switching first. And basically... What we're going to do is we'll attach the white wire to begin with and as I was saying just a moment ago that goes up into the top row so these two contacts at the top are joined so it doesn't matter which one you actually attach to so just go with whatever's going to be convenient for you so we'll get our white wire attached just like that and then all we need to do is attach our 5 volts and our ground now when you're looking at it there's a marking on the board here that's got R33. The point just above that is ground. So that's where we'll attach our black wire to. Okay, so it's that attached. And of course the one next to it, which has got R34 written next to it, that's where our 5 volts comes from. Okay. So that is all you need to do to enable your 50 and 60 hertz switching. Now for our language one, we're going to use the switch that's got the blue wire on it. And again, the top two connectors are actually joined together. So it doesn't matter which one you go to, just pick one that's convenient. If you want it, you could even um, join the top two together with your wire, it really doesn't matter. Okay, so again all we've got to do is add our 5 volts and ground. This time the 5 volts is over near R32 
and our ground is closer to R31 as a bit of a point of reference for you. So we'll just attach the ground first. There we go. These points are quite close together too, so just don't be afraid to go back and double check um, that you haven't shorted anything out. Okay, and what you'd probably want to do after this as well is just add a bit of hot glue over the top of it just to make sure that it's um, everything's nice and safe and secure. So, see if I can't. Here's a little bit of a closer look just as to where everything goes. Alright, so that's our language and 50 60 hertz switches fitted. Um, so what we'll do at this point is we'll give it a um, quick test and then there's a couple more points that I'm just going to go over. So almost done. Okay so I've just got our um, Genesis here set up in a bit of a temporary fashion. I've got the um, S-Video hooked up very temporarily and the switches are hanging out of it but it's going to do to show you what I need to show you. So I'm going to use Streets of Rage so that way we can see our language settings and that. So what I'm going to do is I've got it set to, um, it's on ground at the moment. So our Sega chip's receiving a ground on the language line. And when we turn it on, our language is going to start flying up here. And you'll see it's all in Japanese, so when it gets a ground, it's Japanese. So I'll turn the machine off, we'll flick our switch over, so it's now getting 5 volts and it should come up in English again. There we go. So that's proof that our language switch works. So next up is the 50 and 60 hertz switching. So at the moment you can tell by the fact that there's no borders um, it's already running in 60 hertz or it's native frequency so NTSC um, and it's getting 5 volts at the moment so when we switch it to ground it's going to go to 50 hertz and you can see we've got the borders in there and also it's lost colour and that's the point I needed to go over with it as well. Okay, so for 50 hertz in this machine, um, pretty much if you're going to be, if you happen to live in a European country where you've got RGB, then this mod is all you're going to need to do. When you switch between 50 and 60 hertz, it doesn't matter because power and NTSC don't exist in the RGB world, so you're going to have colour either way. If um, you like the rest of us though and you need 50 hertz to be in colour, this is when you're going to need to do the mod that I showed on the Mega Drive 2. Now, um, because this is a Genesis, you're going to need the 4.433 megahertz um, 4 pin oscillator in order to do it. And basically, if you follow that Mega Drive 2 video, um, it's more or less going to line up with a couple of quick exceptions. Um, one is obviously you need to use a different um, oscillator. Now I have had a few guys get in touch with me and say well where can I get one from? Um, the 4.433 megahertz oscillators are very difficult to find. Um, I have found a company in Australia that sells them. Um, they're called Wagner and um, they have a website that you can go and have a look at and the part number is um, I think it's QXO-1100 um, so if you do a search for Wagner, which is W-A-G-N-E-R, um, maybe put Australia, and then QXO-1100, hopefully you'll be finding a way to the site. Now, um, I didn't get one because, uh, to be honest, um, this Genesis is going to go on my shelf as a collector's piece. <laughs> I'm really excited to have one, but in all honesty, I got it just so I could show you guys where these new solder points are. So there wasn't really the need for me to do it but um, if you need them and you're having trouble let me know and I'll try and find a way to, to help you out with them. Um, the other thing that you need to know that's a little bit different with these um, is when you build up your little oscillator circuit um, basically you're going to need to know where to get where to get and where to put your signals. Now on your Sony chip you need to count down to pin 6 that's, according to the data sheet, that's where the oscillator frequency goes in, alright? So that's where you're going to feed, well that's going to hook up to the centre of your switch, um, if you're following the other model. And 
pretty much if you cut the trace it's going to pin six and very carefully solder to it that's where you're going to get your factory speed from and of course you'll be able to feed um, your new 4.43 megahertz oscillator into it so if you're following the other video hopefully that makes sense but if it doesn't just get in touch and um, yeah I'll um, talk you through it so hopefully guys this has been of help to a couple of you I know there's some guys out there that have got one of these um, and as I was saying I mean if you do certainly don't feel bad about it I mean this particular one here having a Sony encoder and everything it and I, I can't really fault it I think it's um quite a good machine so if you do have one um, hopefully this guide will help you getting some language switching and things um, organized and yeah you'll be away so as always guys thanks very much for watching I really hope you've enjoyed it and uh, yeah we'll see you again soon